Atelier de Kaasfabriek. A cultural center on the edge of Europe. Boa tarde. Estamos aqui nas Manadas. Uh, mais uma entrevista um, para o Festival de Fringe no Atelier de Kaasfabriek. Um, agora temos um artista de Inglaterra, Sim. mas ele mora um, agora aqui uh, na ilha. Uhum. Na Calheta. 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 Okay, okay. Nós uh, estamos a aprender português, ele também. E, uh, há alguns anos daqui vamos uh, falar uh, português muito bem, mas agora não, ok? Não. não. So Obrigada. we continue Obrigada. in English. <laughs> ok, um, Linda. Um, we met a couple of years ago. I had an exhibition. I think it was in Vallas. In, in Horta, Vallas. you heard? In Vallas. It was, was in it? Vallas, oh, yes. Vallas. Okay. And it was. I hate to say it. It was nearly five years ago. Five years ago. Okay. Time. Time flies. Time flies. <laughs> um, so then we met each other off and on. But now, after a lot of adventures, you've uh, you've decided to settle down here on uh, on yes. our island, which I, which we love because uh, I think uh, well, you're an interesting person to have around. Um, but you have quite an interesting history. Uh, you you sailed all around the world with your husband uh, for years, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then uh, had lots of adventures. And about these adventures, you made quilts. So yes. tell me something uh, you, about your boat and how you got to to let's say this idea. This no, not everybody can afford to sail around the world. No, so. <laughs> no. and I think that I was very very fortunate that um, I got early retirement. Okay. And. Um, Then the, the spur for us to do some long distance cruising was when my husband's father was taken very ill. Okay. Only about a year after he'd retired. Okay. And I, I'm a bit older than Andy. <laughs> and I said that if we waited until he retired, I would be a bit too very, old. Very, yeah. Yes. So more than 17. More than 17, <laughs> much more than 17. So we decided that let's... <laughs> We decided that we would spend the summer cruising the west coast of Scotland. Okay, which is a great area. I've beautiful, been there. beautiful. Outer Hebrides, Barra. Hebrides, okay. yeah. Orkney, Shetland yeah. seemed like yeah. a good idea. Yeah. And for some reason, we never actually got back. <laughs> we just thought, well, you're still you're yeah, still on the same yeah, cruise. <laughs> let's go to Ireland, and then well, it's not far to Galicia, and then well, why don't we go to the Canaries? And the big decision, I think, to be honest, was Panama. Okay, and to, to go, go through, through the canal and, and to, the, yes. to, the, to the Pacific Ocean. And, of course, once you're through Panama, it's really much easier to carry on yeah, yeah. than it is to fight your way back. So yeah, yeah, okay. that's what we did. Okay. And 11, no, 11 years later, we came to the Azores. Okay. First of all, to Florge. And then um, we were sitting in a bar above the marina in Tessera, in okay. Angra. In, in Angra. In Angra do Heroismo. Okay. And um, I can't, we can't now remember who said what. Okay. But one of us said to the other, why do you want to go back to England? Uh -huh. And the other replied, well, I don't want to go back to England. <laughs> I thought you did. And in all of those years, we had never, ever discussed that. <laughs> so we decided we didn't want to go back to England okay. and carried on cruising. How, how long ago was this? That was in 2012. 12, okay, so eight 2012. years ago. 2012. Yeah. Okay. And so we just... Carry. We've done a few more Atlantic circuits okay, okay. Since, since then, but then 2017 we came back, and that was it. And and what you, you have a little boat, uh, a nice yacht. What is it? Um, she's a Nicholson 35, built okay. in 1973. So she's an old boat. Old boat. Many sturdy. standards. <laughs> very very sturdy. Okay. Very sturdy. And she's in the harbour in the marina here. In she's the, in Vellash. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, yeah, that, that's well, lots of people that uh, that. In the end, stay here, have this background of doing mm. uh, yachting, touring around the world. Uh, I came here uh, with, a, with an Ostar that went uh, went wrong and I had to retire from it. So, uh, okay, that's a, that's a nice story. But you had you did something very special in this in this trip. You made quilts. Now, first of all, tell me, for instance, uh, women on the Azores and on South Europe, they do a lot of needlework and, and knitting and and and, and, and Weaving and weaving, yes. So they, they might be interested. So tell me something about it. Because it's my mother was a, 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 a very into quilting, so I, I know <laughs> a bit about it. She even had a cat that was called Quilty. 
but um, uh, uh, tell me something about what is well, quilting and, and why did you decide why did to I do it? Why did I yeah. yeah, I think it's one of those things where but, um, I cannot remember learning how to sew. Okay. Because I was such a little girl when mm -hmm. it started. Yeah. So sewing of, of one sort or another mm -hmm. has been part okay. of my life, mm -hmm. all my life, okay. certainly for the last... 65 years that I remember mm -hmm. so um, it, it just seemed illogical for me to think well I'm not going to do any quilting okay. on Coromandel <laughs> but um, there is a limit to how many bed size quilts you can take <laughs> yeah. on a 35 foot boat yeah, yeah. so um, the idea of a journal quilt is that it's it's a snapshot that's so it's like it's a, 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 like it's like a, a, a diary, but in, it's like in diary. quilts of your travels, yes. which is, of course, a great, great, great. monument. So what it is, quilting by def well, the two forms. You've got patchwork, uh -huh. which is buying fabric, cutting it up into little yeah. pieces and yeah. then sewing it back together. Again. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the quilting aspect, which is when you put your three layers together okay. and you stitch through all three layers. And what, which three layers are these? The top layer, if I use yeah, this one to show you. Uh, yeah. No, this is Ilej um, Dashkabras. And what you've got here is the top, which is pieced uh -huh. and appliqued. When you put fabric on and stitch round it, mm -hmm. that's what's known as applique. Mm -hmm. And then you take your three layers, your back layer, mm -hmm. and then between you can mm -hmm. see a white fabric. Fabric, it's like which a, is a wadding. A wadding, okay. a wadding very okay. thin cotton wadding. Okay. And then you stitch all three layers together. And the original idea, of course, was to provide warmth. Uh -huh. um, because the layers are used like a blanket. Like yeah. a blanket, yes. Yeah. But here, we're um, tending to use stitching to emphasize emphasize curves to try and reflect the, the shape okay, of the water. Okay, so you water. have a kind of cloudy, cloudy waving lines in the sky and, then, yes. and a, like a wave-like Wa structure. Wave-like structures. And um, th there are a lot of things you can do to, to emphasize certain uh -huh. things. Yeah, yeah, so that is, as, as I a say, painter, I, I can relate to mm -hmm. that very yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, you, you might want to use a flat a, a flat colour and then give it shape and texture okay. purely and simply through the stitching. Okay, so I, I see you you uh, you use uh, let's say a, a fabric that already has some structure that is mm -hmm. uh, adequate for the image. So here you use cloudy like structure. This is a this is watery. Fabric. This is, is a kind watery. of plant yes. green like or rocky like uh, structures for the rock. That's right. Uh, I, I try to. Um, I don't buy much fabric because okay. again, on a thirty five foot boat, you simply haven't got. No, no, you can't. Uh, you can't do it. Yeah. So um, what I find is that a lot of the, these little journal quilts, the same fabric is used for the sky in a lot of them. <laughs> okay. Sky is sky. So this is a little painting. It's about A4 or something like it's that? A4 it's size. A4 size. They're okay. A4 size. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's, it's really nice. It's really nice. Is there any specific order that you want to show me? Or um, uh, Well, I thought what we could do is look at those, some of those, first of all, that reflect my travels. Okay, yeah. And then all of these are of the Azores. Oh, They're wow. They're all of the Azores. <laughs> so one day we must have an exhibition yeah. when, the, when times are a changing. Oh, when uh, times are changing. <laughs> Yes. Um, I'm from the generation that, uh, that uh, you know, know the, 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 <laughs> the Bob Dylan song. So, <laughs> so tell me, because especially I saw some of your, your, your travel quilts and they're gorgeous. So, okay. Well, let's have a look at this yeah. one, which is something you hope doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. But as we were crossing Biscay, yeah. um, we got caught out. It was only blowing about four, seven, perhaps gay late. Yeah. But um, I had, uh, I'd been on watch and mm -hmm. I said to Andy, I can hear thunder. Uh -huh. oh, sorry, I can see lightning. Can see, okay. I can see lightning. Oh. And he says, oh, don't panic. He said, you know, when you, when you hear the thunder, that's when you worry. Yeah. Well, when I woke him up about two hours later, I said, you can hear the thunder now as well. <laughs> but this was a lightning strike that I, I was asleep, fortunately. Well, I think I was. But Andy said that this bolt of lightning, which he could see, seemed to split into two huh. above the mast. And one hit the sea on one side and the other hit the sea on the other side. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. The rigging turned blue and there were little flames of St. Elmo's <laughs> fire on <laughs> Uh, it can be terrible. All your electronic yeah. equipment might be gone. Nothing. I even I even know of stories of yachts that were actually blown Exploded. in two because the stanchions were overheated. And yes, uh, <laughs> yes. 
In fact, we took no damage at all. Okay. Absolutely no damage, but it wasn't particularly comfortable. So that is storm at sea. That's that's the story. And of the you can you can tell what the you conditions were heaving were too like. when it happened, or were no, you no, just no, sitting no. under the we were still run, storm We were running. Yeah. We were running <laughs> under the, under the reef, you know. Yeah. Um, because, as I say, the, the seas were behind us. Okay. The conditions weren't really we're, we're, bad. But, uh, we're bad, but not dangerous. Not anything. dangerous. Not dangerous at all. No. We met a Cesarina with Johanna and Arian. Once uh, spent about three days in nine gale nine force in Bay of Biscay, mm -hmm. and we we couldn't continue. We heaved to, and we kind of stayed on the outside of the storm. But uh, it was not nice. <laughs> no, it's 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 not nice. But I think people often say, "Oh well, what's it like in a storm?" But if you think about it, you never go out in a storm. No, you stay. We, we always you, watch the videos in the storm. Yeah, <laughs> watch videos. But this, the, this, the wind, it goes up to 25 and drops back. Yeah. And then it goes up to 30 yeah, and drops yeah. back. And 35. So, in fact, you're preparing for this as the wind increases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you never suddenly <laughs> find yourself in the middle of a storm 10. No, not usually, not usually that <laughs> I can think of. Well, squ you have this squall, of course. You can have them here in the Azores also, okay. but that's another different... It's, it's a different yeah, kettle yeah. of fish altogether, yes. Okay. So, so what I do one. with these as well is I use um, silver thread, I use beads, beads and, and sequins. Beads and reflections and... Yes, yeah. which will try and show how, the, how the, the sun, the lightning in this instance, was reflecting on the, on the waves. It's really nice. Yeah, it's and really at that time, Coromandel had a uh, navy yeah. blue. Hole. Yeah, because I, I, I think blue. she was much lighter, a lot of white at this. She's moment. white now. Okay. She's <laughs> white now, but she was navy blue then. <laughs> okay. Now, th this one was another storm. Wow. Um, this was on our way to New Zealand from Tonga, mm. ah. and the last uh, three hundred miles took us five days, and we took more damage in that five days than we had in the previous. 12 months Ooh. dreadful dreadful but the interesting thing you had to go thing, against the wind again or, oh uh, again against just about everything okay. it was it was awful <laughs> yeah. but what was interesting was the colors of the bioluminescence <sighs> in the water so what i wanted to try and portray in this one was how black the seas were but but how, but how light how how, how shiny the, the and shiny the bioluminescence was okay it's, it's, yeah, well, you succeeded. It's so, more. <laughs> when I got to Vongere in, in North Island, um, I joined a patchwork group there. And one of the ladies had a daughter who did belly dancing. <laughs> and Lynn used to make fabric uh, yeah. dresses yeah. for her daughter. Yeah. And all of these are the rem remnants of bits uh, of belly, belly dancing dance costumes. costumes. Like, so I, can, I can imagine the movements <laughs> and shiny and... Yeah. Looks very attractive. <laughs> that's that. That's that. Yeah. No, I, I remember once in sailing off uh, Brittany in France in the night, and we had luminescence in the sea, and a group of dolphins swam around our boat, and you only saw the nose and some contours of the fins mm -hmm. because they they were stirring or uh, let's say they were activating this 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 phenomenon. So you had this. It was pitch black, dark the night, and. These ghosts swimming around my yes. body. It, it, I'll never forget. It. It's, it's, uh, it's astonishing. But I can't make quilts. I, 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 for years I've been thinking, I must make a painting of this. But if, I don't think you can because it's not static. No, no, it's... it's, it's but, okay, it's something that I'll never forget. No, no. The, the, the one I re recall was um, the Cape of Good Hope where the bioluminescence there was the colour of your T-shirt. Okay. <laughs> and at times, because of the waves, the whole, the whole air seemed that the colour of, your, of, of you. And it was, it was very, very strange. But again, you see the dolphins and the waves. Yeah. The waves, waves. I remember different. that we took, uh, we, Rini and I were very young and we had a, a little sloop of about 23 feet or something like that. 22, it was a... And we took some English guys, young guys, uh, we, we're talking the 70s now, from uh, Zeebrugge in Belgium to Flushing in Holland in the night. And we, had, we couldn't sail, so we had to use the outboard. And there was this, this, this long, Wait. shiny trail <laughs> of, uh, of, of bioluminescence yeah, behind it's, it. Was it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Right. Now, we were in um, Isla Margarita in Venezuela, okay. which is very dry, lots of cacti. Mm. But we were there when there was a full lunar eclipse. Okay. And that night, this, this is a 
blue fabric that I had discharged with um, bleach. Bleach, okay, yeah. To, to make these. And that night, the moon turned pink. It was astonishing. So this is a memory of a night in Margarita. <laughs> we were on board another yacht, and we had the most splendid evening watching this pink moon. Oh, you have all these little stitches uh, mm -hmm. of the, of the, to... to that, that's trying to... to uh, th these are cacti, and this yeah. is trying to show the spikes, the spikes of the on, on the cacti. I... Um, there were several different sorts and a very barren landscape, but okay. even so it was... It's just a memory of a night. Okay. And, and one that I'll probably. <laughs> so they're forget. all kind of. You have this kind of peak experience. So a bad storm or. Uh, or a, 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 or a, glorious a, moon, night. a glorious moonlit night and mm -hmm. then later on. So is, are you starting to make this the next morning or is it kind of fermenting it's, it, in your mind? It's and, in my mind. Yeah. Um, one of the things is it's very difficult to sew at sea. It's dangerous <laughs> apart from anything else. I've been trying to do sketching while uh, uh, sailing close to here in Japan, and it's 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 not fun. It's, it's not you fun. You can't do it. <laughs> the other issue is the salt air tends to make needles rusty in no okay, time. Yeah, yeah. So and it can make your fabric salty yeah. as well. So I tend to uh, do my design work while we're on passage, and then say right, this is it. And what I normally do is say to Andy, go away for the day you know <laughs> go and play on your own and um and then i will sit down and, and at least make it make a start okay so that's good yeah. now this one i think is interesting because we were in java and were taken to a um a palace a sultan's palace Sultan's palace. okay and what was interesting about the sultan's palace was that his um I suppose the, the technical term would be presence chamber, where he greeted his okay, visitors. Okay, so kind of meet, uh, yes. greet, meet and greet for... Meet and greet for <laughs> ambassadors and yeah. what have you. But the walls were covered with Delft tiles. Uh, yeah. So yeah. azulacious here. The, the, Azul the, the, azulacious. Uh, and um, there were two sorts. There were the blue and white ones, mm -hmm. which showed uh, maritime scenes or mm. clogs or windmills or... Sh ships yeah. in this instance they were the blue and white ones then the sepia you know that brown yeah, yeah, and yeah, cream yeah. The, ones the, 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 the squid color squid it's, it's yes, yes squid color yeah, yeah. Um, Rembrandt already used it so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay <laughs> <laughs> um, they depicted biblical scenes okay. like Judith knocking a tent peg through the temple of Holofernes uh -huh, okay. and someone was I know there was one walking along oh it was Salome and the head of John the Baptist okay, uh, okay. <laughs> but th this is my interpretation of uh, the Chiribon chip, chip. <laughs> I did in fact uh, no I didn't put it oh yes when put I put the label on I did call it the, by the Dutch word ship ship, ship. Ship. Okay, ship. from Chiribon, which is where we were. Chiribon ship, and yeah. okay, it, and the, and and is it? A, it looks a bit like a typical Dutch round uh, boat. It, yeah, uh, okay. it is. Yes, okay. yes. So this was my interpretation of it. Um, Do you think the tiles were were Dutch? They were made. Oh by, yes, uh, uh, yes. Okay. And when when we spoke to someone about it, the the Dutch would send the tiles as ballast. Yeah. But of course, um, for the people of. Java, mm -hmm. they were regarded as very highly prized trade goods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So spices would go one way and tiles would go the other. Yeah. So, so yeah. beautiful. And this one I quilted in squares to represent the, the, the tile structure of the, of the wall. Tile structure you know, there was a very uh, beautiful tile display uh, opened or, or inaugurated uh, one and a half week ago here yes. in, the, in, the, in the Imperio of uh, mm. the Iglesia Santa Barbara yes. by Antonio Pedrosa. Yes, uh, I saw that. That was, okay. that was beautiful. beautiful. Yes. Then, aha, ah. this is another Vulca Indonesia. Vulcania? Vulcano? Vulcano. This is Krakatoa. K Krakatoa, okay. Because uh, our last night in Indonesia, we spent anchored in the old caldera mm -hmm. of Krakatoa. And it was... It, it was a bit quiet and peaceful and calm, and then suddenly the whole thing the exploded. The whole boom, yeah. boom. So we sat there, and the interesting thing the next morning was that we were only anchored in five meters, yeah. which was odd because the chart said minimum of twenty-five. And when we woke up in the morning, the water was crystal clear, but there were lots of bubbles. 
and when Andy went, he said, you know, I, th I think we better move. Yeah. And he actually had to come back to the cockpit to get some gloves because the anchor chain was too hot for him to, um, to wow. hold. So he said, oh. But a very, very interesting. So you, you, your boat was that? almost cooked or something? Uh, probably like. almost. <laughs> Something okay. that we just didn't think of, but anyway. It but, was, but okay, but it was so the, the water was, there were hot water springs or? or hot water springs okay. underneath, yes, okay. yes. Okay. The, 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 funny enough, it wasn't the water temperature, I don't think, it was the sand. It was the, the sand, sand came on the top of the water and heated yeah. the water. Okay. Yes, yes. So well, I, I remember being in Japan and we had there the Sakurajima uh, near mm -hmm. Kagoshi, in Kagoshima, the southern province. and. It was like a, it was like a, a, a thunderstorm. Okay, so and the next day the boat was completely grey with ash, mm. and uh, the streets and the cars, everything. It was and for people in in in, in Kagoshima, it's apparently uh, normal, but yes, um, it, yes. it's a strange experience. I'm glad this doesn't happen here. Too I often. think we were lucky here because where where we were anchored, that the wind was you, blowing you the, the ash yeah. and everything away from us. Uh, so. Uh, that was a good job. So I enjoyed that one as well. And then... Aha. Uh -huh. You saw this? Yes. Yes. This <laughs> wow, is... Wow, look at uh, you. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, taken from a photograph that, that I took when we were watching humpback whales off Ecuador. Okay. And wonderful to see. I really enjoy them. But when the whale is a lot bigger than your boat... <laughs> it's a bit worrying. It is a bit worrying. Well, I've seen moves of whales falling back with their back on the boat, yes. and, and, and and of course yes. it's uh, it, it's it's you can say goodbye to your boat when it's well. Happens. There's nothing you can do, and there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. And I, I always laugh when I see um, instructions for whale watching boats that you <laughs> must stay whatever it is. 500 meters yeah, from no, the whale. I think it's 15 meters or something. And you can only approach them from the back. And that's right. Well, nobody tells the whales to keep away from your boat. No, that's... that's that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it even holds for dolphins. Uh, um, it, it, you're officially supposed to be uh, quite a, a, a keep a distance from dolphins, but any sailor knows that the dolphins come to your boat and enjoy, right? I, I've had a group of dolphins for 10 days around my yeah. boat on the Atlantic Ocean. And they're so. right under your bow. <laughs> so, right under your okay. bow. But when they choose to do so themselves, I think... Uh, uh, but yes, okay. so that was the most lovely day. And I think what what I liked about this one is that this whale is sort of saying, yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> it's still not completely clear why they do it, no. uh, to remove... Um, algae, algae or whatever, for, from, or, or, mm. or, or shell, shells from their back, or, or just because of. I th if Is I were a whale, fun? I would do it. I would just because it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, dolphins spend a part of their day eating, but the rest of the times they play. Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe we ought to learn to play a bit more as well. well I think uh, we're doing a good job on the island here. Oh, I like play. <laughs> well, it's like today when I'm told, Andy, you've got to go and play on your own today. <laughs> And then this one was Australia. Uh huh. We so were this in, kind of song lines like or something. Yeah, <laughs> we were in Darwin. Okay. And went to the Museum of the Northern Territories. Mm -hmm. Now I I was um, acquainted with Aboriginal art, mm -hmm. but I hadn't realised just how stunning it was it stunning, until yeah. I went to the museum there. And what was equally interesting was learning that it was the process of painting mm -hmm. that was more important than the end result so they would paint some glorious painting mm -hmm. but then that was it tear it up throw it on the fire because it wasn't the finished product it was the process it of was doing the it. process of doing it but there's also a, a shorthand that the aborigine use for certain things so what we've got here is a little man uh -huh. which is people uh -huh. are indicated by circles and he's sitting behind a shelter of some sort okay. with either his digging sticks okay. or there's a basket they use called a coolamon okay. for collecting things. Okay. Now the shorthand for a kangaroo is this. Okay. Th there's <laughs> different ones for, uh, for um, emus, yeah. kangaroos, okay. goannas, they have different It's like shapes. a hieroglyphical it's kind It's like of a hieroglyph, yeah. yes. And these circles indicate that the kangaroo is sitting down and drinking from the, the stream. The, the river, yeah. Yeah. So, um, this, what we have here is that the man's hiding, whether he's going to try and kill a kangaroo to eat or what, we, we don't, don't know. know. But he's watching these kangaroos 
Two of them are drinking, the other four are waiting their turn. Okay. And underneath the soil, all of these are the links of the bush onions. Now, this is the dry season. Uh -huh. Now, in the wet season, yeah. all of these bush onions will spring into life. Okay, but now they're kind of hidden. and They're underground. Uh -huh. They're underground. They're, they're, they haven't come to life yet. So that's the story behind that one. Okay, so this is kind of almost abstract. Without the story, a, a normal Western person would not be Wouldn't able to decipher no. the, the painting. No. And I think this is this is why uh, there was there was one particular book I bought, um, uh, an Aboriginal artist called uh, Reggie Sultan. Yeah, I think I've heard of him. And he yeah, yeah. explains in his book, in this book, he explains how how he came to be such a uh, well known artist, mm -hmm. and also the processes that they go through for their paintings. So that's. That's that one. It's a very pure form of art. And I like the way you kind of adapted it and into a quilting. Because yes, well, <laughs> so often their, their paintings tell stories. Uh -huh. And um, th their stories are important uh, for their own self-development. So, okay, yeah, while telling... This, I think stories are extremely important for people. They, they contain moral lessons. They contain yes. uh, deep wisdom about how to deal in certain, with certain situations. And... Okay, so um, is this hold this? Is this for you? Does it hold too that the process in a way more important than uh, than the end than product? the end product? In some ways, yes, yeah, so. because I think certainly it's the not a kind of like very fast uh, process to make a quilt. It's then. not fast. <laughs> it is. A, it's a this, and because I do all of these by hand, uh -huh. none of them. I don't use the machine at all. Mm -hmm. um, they're all done by hand, and you can you get into an almost meditative rhythm mm -hmm. when you're when you're quilting. It also frees the mind. Mm -hmm. Once you've once your design process is done, and you know what you're going to do, it's just the process of yeah. It's just the process, and the process is I I remarkably this, yeah. calming. I know this as an artist. Uh, you design a, a painting, and then you, for instance, you have grass or trees, and you have a zillion leaves to to paint or. Or, or a lot of detailed structures, and you're just there, and you you have the joy of completely. Let's say there, there's a, a but but uh, to kind of be one with the job in itself. Yes, and, uh, yes, okay. it becomes almost part of who you are. It's to being in the flow. That was the expression. In the flow. Okay. Yes, to go with okay. the flow. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to be fair, some work and some don't. Ah. Um, what, one I, knew, I know that I did a, a Bora Bora, yeah. which is meant to be one of the most beautiful places in yeah. the world. But for me, it was a place that had lost its soul. Okay. Um, there were the dozens mysterious. of these little palm thatched huts oh. over the lagoon, but it was when the recession had hit, yeah. and there was nobody there. So it's a, it's a bit of a sad Empty, place, certainly. Very yeah. sad. It was, a, it was like a film set where everyone had gone home for the weekend. <laughs> We had great difficulty there trying to meet the local people mm -hmm. because generally the local people had been pushed back yeah, from yeah. the shoreline and we, we struggled, but eventually we met four or five different families that, that realised you know, we were there to talk to them, <laughs> not to make money out of them or anything like that. We just wanted to have a chat. Okay. And then, then that, that, that was excellent. So we're now through the... Uh so now we this, come were, to this were the, 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 the travel ones and the other ones are the Azorian well, ones? These, these are still traveling. Okay, but, uh, you know, but, but more from different islands. So okay. we've looked at this one. Uh, let's, let's put let's those out. Put yeah. those out. Yeah. So we've looked at this one. This is the Ileus das Cabras. Ileus das Cabras. Which I think is one of the iconic views from Angra. Or from yeah, Mont from Pisa. Angra. I, I know it, but uh, me being from uh, so South George, I have other iconic yeah. views in mind, of course. But okay. So. Um, if we do them this well, you'd, you'll recognise that one. Yeah, which mountain is I'm that? I wonder which mountain that is. So this <laughs> is a view from Saint Georges, I guess. No, I'm afraid this is from Horta. From Horta. This okay. is from Horta. Okay, and I'm always so, wrong, you know. You know. No, no problem. <laughs> so what we have here are, are the Hortensia. Yeah. Um, we've got the, the scarf around Pico. And um, then the, 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 the cloudy general structures cloudy and the structures and grasses and in the fields. And what I've done here is to try and emphasize how the, how the shoreline the, is the broken shoreline up. Is and, and rocky. And so we've done that. So, yeah, that's... Uh, so I, I like your solutions because it's a kind of... Um, here you have these kind of stitches 
in a, mm -hmm. in a little asterisk uh, to yes. suggest the leaves of the of the of the okay. plant itself. Here you have the whole flower to, for mm -hmm. that. Here you have the same stitch. To uh, I've written a book about painting, and <laughs> and those things interest me. You people can use the same kind of stroke rhythms or or or, or yeah hatching patterns uh, yes. to suggest different structures. Yes, yes. I mean, if if you think about it, all of this is one. Well, most of the quilting is one stitch. Okay. It's a running stitch. Okay. But the way you use that running stitch, the colours that you use, can emphasise shapes, styles, textures, if you wish. Okay. Now, uh, we then had another storm. Now, this is storm at sea too. But here you see, this was after we'd had coromandel painted. Oh yeah, it's, it has the and right... And uh... this was one where we did heave to in a, in a severe gale nine, storm mm -hmm. ten. Um, but trying to brilliant blue skies and sunshine. I know I've been in the most bad storms, but it, it's basically a trough after a depression, yes, and the, yes. the, the 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 worst winds come out of that. Yes. But yes. this is gorgeous weather, and they are struggling to but. stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So that's that one. Now this one again is. Um, I, don't let me guess because there's so much. <laughs> that again is Fayal. Okay. Because um, on near Pedro Miguel, uh -huh. on Fayal, mm -hmm. um, we saw a uh, a windmill, and I said, "Yeah, that, that's what I'll do." Oh, you had the, you had the, you had fabric with cows yes, already imprinted yes. on. So. Well, um, I think Joanna has got my best vacas de velas, <laughs> which is the one with the cows and the morning glory and the walls. And I, I and that. I've seen it. It's, yeah. it's gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Well, I gave that to Joanna. <laughs> Now, yeah. you know, you yeah. know what this yeah. is. Uh, it, actually, I was swimming in the bay uh, two, four days ago, and it suddenly, well, luckily I was wearing my diving suit and gloves, but I was swimming in the midst of those. and didn't touch them, but that was pretty scary. <laughs> well, I think the last two years, there have been plagues of these, yeah. haven't there? No, yeah, well, not for, for us, not the last two not years, either. because we, we, maybe 10, 15 years ago already, we sailed from... So yours to uh, to Lages, and in every square meter on the whole trip there were one or two at sea. Yes. So sometimes you have these very. I'm not sure. I well, they come and they, it's. I don't. Know, I don't know why, but I, I know last sometimes year. Sometimes there's much more than others. Yeah. yeah, last year was particularly bad, yeah, yeah. and I know there was one day in you know the beach in uh, Praina, uh -huh. Angra. That it must have been twelve. No, I think in meters, four or five meters. Of the beach, yeah, yeah. Just completely thick, covered in this. Uh, thick, and then they were out to sea as well. So, okay. that's good. You'll recognize. You will recognize this one. I'm sure. Uh, is this on top of the 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 uh, what's called what's uh, 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 the overseas in the overseas yes. and yes. I've never been there actually. I, Have you not? No, oh, no. it's lovely. But I, I made a painting of a view of Vallas. And actually, there was a in the in the photo I used. There was a little black spot on top of the. So I took my brush while painting, and a little black spot. And then my friend Lino came and he said, "Ah, oh, I see you painted the mill too." I said, "Oh, it's a mill, <laughs> but this is the same mill." Yes, it's the same one, same one. Yeah. But again, looking at Pico. Yeah, yeah. iconic, I, iconic view. Iconic, iconic view. It is. Andy says that the, um, I do use artistic license, and Andy says the only way you would get that view with um, the strip of the Canal de Saint-Georges. Yeah, would be hanging in the air. If I was about 20 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. But isn't, isn't the volcano a, a God's gift to, to, to visual artists? Oh, definitely. Because it was the diagonals and, and, and it's such a uh, beautiful... Uh, the, the, when I came here, the only volcanoes I knew in art were uh, the views of Mount Fuji from Hokusai, mm -hmm. And Donald Duck, <laughs> with a, with a, a proverbial volcano with a torus of clouds around it. But yeah. um, I, I never realized how in, in imposing they are and how, how great they are to make make images of. They, they, they are just there <laughs> and they dominate landscape. Yeah, that's it's all, uh, all there is to it. And here's another one of Piku. <laughs> yeah, I see it. And now this it's is Relampagos, the P do Piku. Okay. Uh, two or three years ago, someone took... Actually, this is from someone else's photograph. OK. But uh, they took a photograph of a lightning strike at the top of Piku. OK. Which I thought I was, thought was... And I thought, I've got to do that. I've got to do that. And uh, so what we have here is the lightning. Uh -huh. Black, black sky above, but 
dark, dark blue behind. Uh -huh. And then the, here you've the, got the Magdalena lights of the settlements and, and the, yeah. the, the, the settlements. The roads and the area. Yes. So that's Ralambagos Lupiku. Okay. And uh, another iconic view, but this one is Flores. Oh. The Rocha de Bordeaux. Yeah. I've been to Florida, but I don't know that. Uh, um, it's on the southwest corner as you go round towards Faja Grand. Okay, yeah, okay, I've been on that road, but mm -hmm. I don't remember. And, and can you see it from the road? Or? Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. It's, I think, I mean, as well as being interested in lots of other things, I'm interested in geology. Okay. And these are organ pipes. Oh, is that, is that just, yeah, I know that. You I know, know that. that I, actually, yes. I don't recognize it completely. <laughs> Because it, it's like the the basalt they have in Ireland. It's basalt. Also. It's basalt yes. in, in the It's like the Devil's Cause. Um, yeah, yeah. No, not the Devil's no. Cause. The Giant's Cause yeah. way. Or the Fingal's Cave yeah, on yeah. stuff. It's the same kind of stuff. Kilt Rock yeah, yeah, yeah. on Sky. Oh, okay. So, so, um, so it's I, I think you abstracted a bit too much from... <laughs> but now I now I know what you... you now you know what it uh, is. No, because I've done a, a book with watercolours on Flores. Oh, yeah. And uh, actually it's out of print now, but we planning to re to redo it and to reprint mm -hmm. it uh, maybe but at this in this summer we'll do not it will be no. difficult to sell it to the tourists because there are no there tourists. Aren't any tourists okay so, no. okay. Yeah, okay, course, so yeah. that's and then this last one uh -huh. which i bought is uh, it is called Benvindu Gaston do you remember hurricane gaston uh, yeah uh, 2 3 years ago yeah, yeah and i know andy was away and i was on coromandel on my own here in, um, on, on in, Angra. A, in Angra. In Angra. In Angra. In Angra, it was a hurricane. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And whether it was, it was, well, technically, of course, because it's outside the tropics, it's yeah. not a trop. It's not a, a hurricane, although nobody tells it that no, it's not no, a hurricane can anymore. Can we it rather? It was rather rough. And, and the the one we had last year, what was it called? Lorenzo. Lorenzo was but pretty it, aggressive. It, very aggressive. <laughs> well, look what it did to flo to the floor. The whole the whole port yeah. went so. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is hello or goodbye, Lorenzo. This is hello, uh, hello. or welcome, welcome, <laughs> well, Benvenuto okay. Gaston. Okay. But uh, do you know you know the road that goes from Angra up towards Mont Brazil? Yeah, I know. Where, where you have all those the trees. Yeah, we can. This is a walking walking film predominantly. I think. Yes. I mean, maybe you can go there with a car, but people. Yes. But it's, it's it a is a, there's walk. a great walk around the, the, the sure? yeah. So these are pieces of the bark of the platanos. Ah. That what and what I did with them is. Um, Soaked them in water overnight, mm -hmm. and then pressed them pressed between them to, so paper to flatten them to make them flat, and then I cut the shapes of the leaves uh -huh. to to mimic the platanos, and then fix the whole lot under net, and then quilted it sideways it. to show them I love it. the this rain. Is a, the rain. This is a kind of uh, quilting two point zero. Uh. Yeah, but it's, it's <laughs> another it's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes the sometimes the journal quilts are precise moments in time, and sometimes like it is a sentiment. Sometimes they're stories of uh, what, what happened. So I broke my. I had. Um, we were in the United States, and in a ditch, mm -hmm. I found a lovely little Christmas mug. Okay. And I, of course, took it home with me yeah. and did. And it was during Gaston, I had left the mug on the draining board mm -hmm. on the boat. Okay. And she healed so much that it fell off <laughs> and broke the handle off. Oh. oh. So, th so that's another story that goes it with, the, the story, with the story, if you like. Okay, uh, I see these ones are finished with a with a, a ribbon or something like that. Yes, that is. Y you're going to do this too, or there's still to work that. to be done. But, uh. it, I, I think that at this stage, mm -hmm. um, I wondered what I was going to do with them, um, because those like that, I have 120. 100. I was asking. This is not probably not all that you no, have. No, no, the pile is this side. Okay. I have 120. And my idea was to group them together mm -hmm. and perhaps have all of January or okay. all of February mm -hmm. as wall hangings in their own right, mm -hmm. rather than have them all sitting in plastic bags. Mm -hmm. So that is something that uh, now we're, we're in Calieta, now that I'm going to have a sewing room to myself, um, this is... The, the Plan B. Plan B. So you yes. could make a giant quilt out of all of that. I could do. I could. I mean, you'd probably cover your roof. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's something that um, I think most people have a creative streak. I simply use fabric and thread and needles. 
in order to express my... It's, it's the outlet for my artistic expression. Okay, well, Linda, it was a, a, a great for you to share all these experiences and the, these, these beautiful little works of art. And, and uh, with any artist, you, you kind of get a glimpse of somebody's soul when you look at their work. So <laughs> I, I really appreciate you, and especially mm -hmm. with all the explanations. Uh, uh, some of them are so abstract that without the explanations, they are difficult mm. to, to fathom. Yes. Uh, some of them are, are really, really easy to be readable, but they're all great. So thanks a lot. Um, this was a nice interview. We, um, that someday we'll organize an exhibition of yes. your work in Atelier you. de Kaasverbrink. I hope you have a lovely time on our island, and I hope you do a lot of interesting things in the near future. I hope okay. so. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Okay. Atelier de Kaasfabriek. A cultural center on the edge of Europe. <laughs>